public property because this the centre and the, the one next door is owned by the county and Great this these side walks are the public side. Yeah. And so you know last yes, week I had you come I, here now and preach. Yeah. Yes. Last week I had um, I was standing at the other one because I had the the uh, Indian national day there. So the, the manager came out and he got yeah. the, the police out and I told him, listen. Um, like so I spoke bad. to a police officer a few weeks ago, had, months ago, and he told me this is public property. Saturday, like, I went online, I checked the reason I had before, I didn't tell him that. He had left the house. Um, but first of all, they wanted to back. chase us and away and tell us where it's a designated area. He was coming in. So I said, no, I don't have to well, go to a designated area. He gets home, of course, there's a flyer on the door. First Amendment advice, don't supply in the middle area. It applies in public away, and then, like, he must have been living. So they tried to do that again, but, you know, I went through that whole procedure with them last week. And then, as I shared this flyer, it's the floor for the mile. Start studying these You know, yeah, the typical the thing of trying to bully you away. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this is all public. Wonderful. All you're, you're from South Africa? Yeah. My wife's Zambia. Oh, yeah. 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 Not too far from nope. yeah. <laughs> A new revelation. Well, no. uh, I don't want to interrupt you, brother. Oh, you're oh, no, I've been going for. I'm like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking for like. You mind, bro? Oh, no, I'm not sure where they break breakies, but you know. They have it next week too, and when they do their lunch break, they have a couple of hundred of them. That's Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, we've seen some. I mean, I could just keep going over the same I mean, stuff. Look at this parking lot. Incredible. You need a water or anything, brother? Yeah, we need a water. You need a water? Uh, yeah. No, thank you, Dad. What kind of water is that? This is uh, water from Cave Springs. Dad's taking you Praise there. Praise the Lord. Yeah. yeah. Dad's what? Dad's taking you there before to Cave Springs. Yeah. I went to Cave Springs. <sighs> Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Worship Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. Who stands in his resurrected body, his physical resurrected body, where he will be returning one day to judge the living and the dead and set up a kingdom where he'll, he will rule and reign for a thousand years while that devil is in prison. And then when that devil's released out of prison and he stirs up the kings of the world for a second battle and fire comes down out of heaven, that he shall rule and reign forever and ever. This is our God. This is our God in whom we serve. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ is the Son of Man in Daniel 6. Jesus Christ himself said in the book of Revelations, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. He was not a created being. He was not an angel. How y'all doing? How you doing? Hey, good. Good to see everybody. All right. You need water or anything? We got water, bro. Thank you. I appreciate it. Enjoy that info. Thanks, bro. We got we got the truth for you, man. You need living water. We have an emergency in progress, and I have to be working on it. Thank you. Yep. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray for whoever's sick. This ambulance is coming. What's the matter with her? Anybody know? No. All right. In the name of Jesus, we pray for this person. That's right. Whoever it is that's sick right now. Whoever it is having heat stroke, whatever it is, this ambulance is coming. We pray for them in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ can heal. My wife was healed. My wife was healed from an incurable disease in her uterus. Healed by the power of God. My daughter was healed when she was first born by the power of God. I had devils cast out of me by the power of God. The Holy Spirit, the triune God. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. One God. One in essence, three in persons. Just like you have a soul, a spirit, and a body, God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So what is your soul's name? Is, is, is that you, your soul? You mean you're two people in one? You have a soul. You believe you have a soul, don't you? You believe you have an immaterial soul, and then that is you, but you also have a body. That is you as well. So why is it so hard to understand that we have one God with three persons? Do you want to put God in a box according to your own human understanding? You've got to read the Bible as it says. And not the New World Translation Bible that's been twisted. Jehovah Witnesses have predicted the end of the world like five times, and it hasn't come yet, folks. 
You know why? Because you're not ready. You're not ready to, to meet God because you don't know Him. You need to know the true Christ. The true Jesus Christ. If the Bible testifies that God alone is the Creator, God alone is Creator, according to Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. God, says God. Jehovah created the heaven and the earth. Nehemiah 9.6. What does it say in Nehemiah 9.6, folks? Thou, even thou art Lord alone. Thou hast made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their hosts, the earth, and all the things that are therein. God did that. I'm sure you can all agree with me that God created all those things. Isaiah 66, 1 and 2. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Verse 2, for all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. God created the heavens and the earth, folks. He created the animals, he created the trees. I'm sure we can agree with that. Okay? Jesus created all things. You know there's scriptures that talk about how Jesus created things, that he created the world, that he created mankind? Jesus, specifically the Son of God. You ever heard of the hypostatic union? It's that Jesus Christ added to his divine nature when he stepped inside of that womb of Mary, man's nature. When he stepped inside of that flesh, as a man, he has a God over him. But as God, he has no God over him. Nowhere in the Bible where you see it say that the Holy Spirit or the Father has a God over them, but only Jesus, the man. In Jeremiah it says, God is the God of all flesh. So when the Son of God, as it says in 1 Timothy 3.16, great is the mystery of God, godliness. God, God, God was manifest in the flesh. What does manifest mean? Manifest means that he was revealed from one dimension to the next. Okay? He came into our dimension, this world, this flesh. He crossed over the veil that separates us between God and man, the spirit world and us, our world. He crossed over through the flesh. Now that happened, one, that happened in Exodus, and what happened? In the book of Exodus, when God came into this realm, Mount Sinai was set on fire. Mount Sinai was set on fire. Even today, through the archaeology of certain men, you can see the top of Mount Sinai is still black. And no other mountaintop is black. Why is that? Because God came down upon Mount Sinai and burned it. And he said, whosoever touches this mountain, let him be stricken through with a dart, even an animal. That's a fearful God, folks. But he didn't come this time like that. He came as a lamb. Manifested. 1 Timothy 3.16. God manifested in the flesh. God. Not just a man. Jesus Christ, as it says in John 1. Not the Word was a God, as your Bible says, your, your, your twisted scriptures. A God. If the word is a God, then you serve another God. And in Hebrews 1.8, your scriptures also try to change the divinity of Christ, where it says, thy throne is God. No. Sorry. There's no translation in the world that says that, except for the New World, New world Order translation. Thy throne is God. No. It's thy throne, O God. In that scripture, God the Father is recognizing the divinity of His Son. And you, you're blind to that because of your belief system. The devil has blinded your eyes so you won't be saved. You don't, feel, you don't feel an assurance of salvation. You've been brainwashed by an organization to believe something that is not true about Scripture. And if you open your eyes, if you study it out for yourself, apart from Jehovah Witnesses, read the Bible for yourself. You might find some freedom, folks. Can anybody come up here and tell me the gospel of Jesus Christ? Does anybody in, in, in this whole building know what the gospel of Jesus Christ is? 
It's not works, folks. You're not good enough to make it into the kingdom. It's not by you serving Jehovah Witness organization. It's not by you being good and wearing your skirts below your knees and having great morality. You're not going to make it into the kingdom of God like that. Yes, the Bible says faith without works is dead, but that is not, the works aren't what gets you saved, it's the faith. The works are a sign of that genuine faith, and God knows who are His. Let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Jesus called the Pharisees whitewashed tombs because they looked good on the outside, but inside they were dead men's bones. That was Jesus, not me. Jesus created all things. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Not was a God, lowercase g, was God, capital G, folks. Your Bible grossly twists that, and yours is the only translation that does it. Grossly twisted, folks. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. This is talking about Jesus. Wait a minute, I thought the Old Testament said that God created all things, folks. Now we see Jesus as a creator. The Old Testament is, the, is Jesus Christ concealed. The New Testament is Jesus Christ revealed. As you see in the book of Revelations, you see the Lamb coming out of the midst of the throne. Because the Lamb had been revealed now. He's one with the Father. Now you see Him coming out of the midst of the, of the throne to open the seals, folks. He has triumphed over the devil now. He's triumphed over the devil now to open the seals. Okay? That's the God that we serve. That is not the God that the Jehovah Witness serves. The Jehovah's Witness serves a created God, a created God, who says that Jesus was the Mi Michael the Archangel. Show me that in Scripture, folks. Even in your translation. Show me where Michael is the Archangel, or, or Jesus is Michael the Archangel. You know, the Mormons believe the same thing, folks. Do you know that your Bible was influenced by Westcott and Hort, who were hired by the Catholic Church to deceive you? Westcott and Hort, that's, that's the foundation of your scriptures. Codex Sinaiticus and Vaticanus. And you say you have a pure form of scripture. Folks, you really need Jesus. You need the true, true Christ. You can mock and laugh and walk by and think it's a joke, but you know what? We come out here out of the love of God for you. We know the bondage that you're in right now. The pride that keeps you from recognizing the truth. It's that pride that makes you mock and shake your head and smile and say, ah, these guys are crazy. You don't know God, folks, but Jesus wants to set you free. We have some free information for you, folks. You can have an assurance of your salvation. If you don't know if you're going to make it into the kingdom of God, then what salvation do you have, folks? Our heart breaks for you. We want to see you in the kingdom of God. Our heart breaks for you, folks. Colossians 1.16 More evidence that Jesus created all things. For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. By Him, speaking of Jesus. Okay? God is the first and the last. God is the first and the last, according to Isaiah 44, 6 and 48, 12. God, it says, Jehovah is the first and the last. He's the first and the last. That's what it says in Isaiah. Now go over to Revelations 22, verse 13, and also verse 16. Jesus is speaking. Jesus even said, I have sent mine angel. Wait a minute, I thought Jesus was an angel. Jesus has angels being an angel? And in Hebrews 1, chapter 8, to which, Hebrews 1, to which of the angels has he said at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Jesus is not an angel, folks. He never was. The Bible speaks against it. You can, you can harden yourself in your pride and think you know, but the, the Bible speaks against it, folks. You can't show me one scripture in the Word of God that says Jesus was an angel. If anybody wants a Bible study, you're free to come up. We can talk. That's why we're here. To bear witness to the truth. The Bible says, John, one of the apostles, I think John said, we testify of those things that we have seen and heard. I have seen the power of God working in my life. I have an assurance of salvation by the Spirit of grace. 
by the Spirit of grace. You walk away in your pride thinking you know God, but at the end of the day, when you're on your deathbed, you're, you're not going to have any confidence that you're going to make it into the kingdom of God apart from the true Christ. Jesus is God, ladies. Jesus is God, one with the Father. And if anybody has a heart to hear, an ear to hear, let him hear. Let him hear, or her. God is the final judge, folks. God. In Psalm 75, 7, it says, But God is the judge. He put it down one and set up up another. In John 5, 22, we see Jesus as the judge. That all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He has committed all judgment unto the Son. So how do we honor the Son as we honor the Father? We can agree that we know that the Father is God. But how are you honoring the, the Father by dishonoring His Son, calling Him a mere man? calling him that he was created, saying that he was Michael the archangel. That's not honoring the son. You don't know God. If you don't honor the son, you're not honoring the father, Jehovah. You're not honoring Jehovah by, by that. The scriptures are clear. The divinity of Jesus is right there in front of your face. He is both God and man. He became a man in, the, in Mary's womb, folks. But you're brainwashed by Jehovah Witness doctrine. Folks, we have some free information for you. For those truth seekers that are hungry, that aren't settled in their spirit in, in this organization, that want to know God, there's a burning desire in your heart to know God. That hunger is not satisfied by what you're seeing in this, in this organization. That's God trying to draw you out. That's God trying to bring you to himself. That feeling in your soul that's like, oh, I'm so hungry to know God, but I'm just not satisfied here. Don't ignore that, folks. Don't harden yourself in pride when you feel that, because that's Jesus drawing you to himself. God wants to save you. He doesn't want to destroy you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to deliver you out of music like Demi Lovato. He wants you to be free from that. He, she might have saw you preach at that concert. Who? She got a Demi Lovato oh, shirt. Oh, possibly. Demi Lovato and Brad, Brad Paisley. Got now a check this here. out, folks. Any honest person right now, can anybody tell me who, pop quiz, folks, who raised Jesus from the dead? Who raised Jesus from the dead? What does the Bible say? Who raised Jesus from the dead, folks? Can somebody tell me? Anybody tell me? I know there's not a lot of people out here. Can anybody tell me who raised Jesus from the dead? Do you believe that Jesus was raised from the dead? Who raised Jesus from the dead, folks? What does the Bible say? God raised Jesus from the dead. Acts 2.23 Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death. So the Bible testifies that God raised Jesus from the dead. Also in Acts 5.30 The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hung on a tree. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. So we see in Scripture that God raised Jesus from the dead. What else do we see? We see in Scripture that the Father, God the Father. Now pay attention, folks. You're going to see the, the, the triune God in action here. You really need to study your Bibles, folks. We just saw in Scripture that God raised Jesus from the dead. Now we're going to see that the Father raised Jesus from the dead. John 5, 21. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. The Father raises up from the dead. Romans 6, 4. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we should walk in newness of life. The Father raised Jesus from the dead. Galatians 1, 1. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Christ Jesus and God the Father, God the Father, who raised him up from the dead. So we see in Scripture that God raised Jesus from the dead, the Father, the Father raised Jesus from the dead. Who else? Who else do we see in Scripture? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Romans 8.11. 
But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelt in you. The Holy Spirit, folks. The Holy Spirit. 1 Peter 3.18 For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. So now we see in Scripture, God raised Jesus from the dead, the Father raised Jesus from the dead, and the Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Now to a Jehovah Witness, that's going to spin your head a little bit. That's going to confuse you because your, your, your mindset doesn't believe in three persons but one God. Now check this out. One more person raised Jesus from the dead, folks. One more person. Jesus himself raised himself, proving that he is God from the dead. John 2.19 Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. But he spake of the temple of his body. Destroy this temple. Uh-oh, the temple of his body. So that kind of gets rid of that spiritual resurrection doctrine. Because he said the temple is referring to his body. And Jesus said that he, that he would raise it up after three days himself. Folks, you've got to study your Bibles. Don't listen to the lies. Open your Bible. Even the New World Translation says that. You know, one thing I find interesting about it. Also, in John 10, 18, Jesus said, No man taketh it from me, his life, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I, Jesus, I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received from my Father. So now we see in Scripture, I asked you, who raised God from the dead? From Scripture, we see that God raised Him from the dead. We see the Father raised Him from the dead. We see the Holy Spirit raised Him from the dead. And we see Jesus Himself raising Himself from the dead. There you see God in action, bringing life. Folks, you can turn a blind eye to it, but you're deceived. It's, it's called deception, folks. That's why, that's why you don't believe it. What about, what, who are you supposed to worship? What does the Bible say that you should worship? Who should you worship? Exodus 23, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Jehovah God speaking. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. But yet your, your translation says the word was a God. The word was a God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Who should you worship? Exodus 34, 14. For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Now tell me why, folks. When Peter tried, when Cornelius, in the book of Acts, tried to worship Peter, Peter rebuked him and said, no, get up, I'm a man. When Paul, after he raised the lame man, they tried, in the book of Acts, they tried to, they, the, the, the Gentiles came out and tried to make sacrifices to him. And he rebu they, they went out and they tore their clothes and said, no, we are men of like passions as yourself. They were trying to turn them away from these things. And when, and when John the Apostle was in the vision and revelation, the revelations, twice the angel rebuked him for bowing down to him, worshiping him. So let me ask, let me ask this question, folks. Does anybody care about their soul today? Why in the Bible does Jesus never refuse worship if he's not God? But everybody else, every other common man, every other man refuses worship or gets rebuked for worshiping an angel. If Jesus was an angel, if Jesus was only a man, then how come people are not getting rebuked in the Bible for bowing down to him and worshiping him? As the Bible says, even the angels of God worship him. And, that, and in that context, it's not paying respect. It's not giving him respect. It's worshiping him in the sense of God. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith... Let all the angels of God worship him. Hebrews 1.6 
So Jesus is worshipped. Matthew 2, 2. 2, 11, I mean. Yeah, 2, 2. Folks, you cannot explain away all these scriptures with your twisted doctrine. You can't. You have to reckon with them. You have to reckon with them, folks. You can't just be deceived like this and go along with an organization that preaches against these things. Did you not know that the Bible testifies in 1 Timothy 4? I'll read it for you. Who confounded the language of the power of Babylon? 1 Timothy 4. So if you have a problem with how we say his name because of the language we speak, take it over God. He's the one that can find the Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And that's what Jehovah Witness doctrine is. It's a doctrine of a devil. Folks, anything that makes Jesus less honorable than what he is, in truth, is a doctrine of a devil. Satan loves to do that. Satan's not playing with you, folks. The devil is not playing with you, folks. Most of the Jehovah Witnesses I've ever met don't even know if they're going to go to heaven or not. They can't even tell me the gospel. What is the gospel? Because you don't know God. And it's out of the love of God. It's out of the love of the true Jesus Christ that he sends his preachers out to tell you the truth. But most people walk by hardened in their pride, thinking thoughts like mocking thoughts and smiling and shaking their heads when Jesus is sending his preachers to tell you the truth that you might be saved. What are you going to do on the day of judgment when you stand before the Son of God and he says this, you're, you're going to say, well, Lord, we went door to door. We went door to door talking about Jehovah. We fed the poor. We did all these wonderful works. And Jesus is going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Jesus never knew you because you never knew him as God. You belittled him by calling him just a man that he's created. You belittled him that he was Michael the Archangel. Folks, we're talking about the lamb, the, the lion of the tribe of Judah, folks. Jesus loves you and he gives you an opportunity every day to wake up and search out these things for yourself. We have some free information for anybody who is interested. I know your Jehovah Witness organization will shun you. Will shun you for coming and talking to people like us. But you know what? That's what the Bible says would happen, folks. That's what the Bible says would happen when you have the truth. People are going to shun you. Christ came to bring division. If your mother forsakes you, if your father forsakes you, if your aunt or uncle doesn't want anything to do with you because you found the truth about Jesus, who Jesus is, pray for them. Say, I can't. I can't anymore. I'm hungry for God. I want to know who Jesus is. And this, this organization is not feeding my soul. I'm still hungry for God. I don't know if I'm going to die and go to hell. I don't know what's going to happen to me when I die. Folks, I understand that bondage. I understand that. But your pride is in the way. Your pride is in the way. A haughty spirit steeped in false doctrine. Steeped in false doctrine. Twisted scripture plainly twisted scripture but you're so brainwashed you can't see it folks I bring Jehovah Witnesses when, when I don't bring them into the house we stand outside and have a good conversation and none of them can answer any of these things folks they can't answer any of these things when it's presented to them 
You can't get around the scripture. Jesus is both God and man, folks. Jesus is both God and man. The Bible in the book of Jeremiah says that God is the God of all flesh. Behold, Jeremiah 32, 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Again, 1 Timothy 3, 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God, God, God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Colossians 2, 8 and 9, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Don't let the Jehovah Witness organization spoil you through philosophy. Through philosophy, sir, and vain deceit, turning you away from the true Christ. Vain deceit. Vain deceit. They're taking advantage of you. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ, not after Christ, the anointed, God, fully man and fully God. This doctrine is not after Christ, twisting Bible scriptures to your own, to suit your own. Your founder, your founder was a, was a mason. He took advantage of it. He took advantage of people. He's a wicked man, folks. Your organization has predicted the end of the world five times. And yet you still go believing this lie when God is calling you out of it. And people can smile and mock and walk by, but let, let, let somebody come up and discourse. Let's talk. That's why we're here. Let's talk. Let's go into the scripture. Let's pull out. Let's reason together, folks. That's why we're here. Because Jesus loves you. You don't know Jesus. I usually don't watch myself. I usually watch Adam Jeremiah. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Jesus thought it not robbery to be equal with God because he is God with the Father and the Holy Ghost. But he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. He was made in the likeness of men. So when he stepped into Mary's womb, he humbled himself to be made in the likeness of men. Jesus said in Revelations 22, 13. Jesus said this, folks. I didn't write this. Jesus said this. And John the Apostle witnessed it. Do you believe that today, folks? Do you believe that? Jesus said, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. The first and the last. Now listen to this, folks. I'm sure most people have not studied this scripture out. Okay? Jesus calls himself the root, the root and the offspring of David. 